All right, this is Algebra 1, 9.4 Part 2, but before we get started, I want to remind people that there is a live stream on Wednesdays now from 2 to 3 p.m. Um, you can show up on my YouTube channel and ask me questions. We had about 10 people there last time. Uh, I would love for you to show up and uh, participate if you can. If you can, I will give you a 5 out of 5 homework score. No penalty if you cannot attend uh, this. Uh, since I understand not everybody can, but I want to give people a little additive incentive because it really helps me if people are there asking me questions and giving me guidance on what's hard. So that when people watch it later, if they can, they can get the benefit from it. So that will be next Wednesday at two, two, from 2 to 3 p.m. And if you want to watch this one, um, it is posted on my homework calendar on my website. All right. So let's actually do 9.4 part 2. So in 9.4 part 2, we just add some algebra steps to our quadratic solving questions. Um, one warning, the hardest problem on this homework is actually the first problem on this homework. Uh, so do not get totally dissuaded if you can't do the first one. Try the other ones because they, uh, every other question is easier than the first one, uh, in my opinion. So. Uh, to move forward to our first type of question, if you have something like x squared plus 17 equals 17, and you want to solve this quadratic equation, you first subtract 17 from both sides, and get x squared equals 0, and then you'd square root both sides. And normally, when you square root both sides, you get two answers, but because it equals 0, we only get one answer, x equals 0. I mean, you can get two answers. They're just both x equals 0. So they're a little redundant, and we just keep one of them. That's our first type. Those are pretty nice. And one of the interesting things is we could put like a uh, 1,000 x squared here, and it wouldn't actually change the answer to the question because uh, we'd divide by a 1,000, and we'd still get x equals 0. So it actually doesn't even matter if there's a coefficient here. If you whatever you get, uh, you know, something times x squared equals zero, you're going to get x equals zero. Anyways, moving forward, our next type of example is the kind where you just have to do a little bit of algebra before you can get to the final answer. Um, so let's say you have something like 3x squared minus 11 equals 4. So first step is you want to get the x squared by itself when you're doing these square root questions. So we'd add 11 to both sides. Cool. Now we want to get rid of the coefficient of x squared, which is 3. And now we can square root both sides. And boom, x equals root 5, x equals negative root 5. So not too bad there. We just had a couple easy algebra steps before we square root both sides. Really important note, you cannot square root both sides unless your squared is by itself. So if I tried to square root both sides at the beginning here, things would have gone horribly. I would have gotten nowhere, or I would have broken math or something. So you have to get the x squared by itself. I had to wait till this step. All right, our next type of question is going to be this kind. What if I have something like negative 2x squared um, plus 14 equals uh, negative 3, like this. Is this question going to be evil? Not really. We subtract 14. We divide by negative 2. And we actually get x squared equals 17 over 2. Or 8.5 would also be fine. Um, when I go to square root both sides, we get the two answers. We get x equals the square root of 17 over 2, and x equals the negative square root of 17 over 2. So the negatives there really didn't throw us much for a loop. So now let's go for like the trickier kinds of questions. So our first trickier kind of question is, what if I keep my 2x squared this time, but instead I do something like plus 100 equals 3? So what makes this one a little bit trickier is, first we get rid of the number, subtract 100, 
Uh, we have a negative equals a 2x squared. So if I divide by 2, I actually get x squared equals negative... Wait, I'm dividing by positive 2, not negative 2. Uh, I actually get x squared equals 48.5 or 97 over 2. And just leave it as 97 over 2. Or sorry, negative. 97 over 2. I forgot the negative sign. Whoopsies. Um, anyways, when I go to square root both sides, you can't square root negatives. This is bad. And so this is no solution. So anytime you get a lonely x squared equal to a negative number, you can just bail on the question. There's, there's nothing left to do. It is a no solution. But notice how this is in contrast to our last question, because in our last question we had something like negative 2x squared equals, I forget what it was, but equals a negative. And we had a negative over here, but our x squared wasn't alone. So when we divided by negative 2, we actually got x squared equals a positive number. This is okay. This keeps going, we get two answers. But if we get x squared equals negative number, we don't. And now let's get to our hardest type of question, which again, ironically, is the first question on the homework. So let's say I have something like 3 minus 3x squared uh, plus 2 equals, what should I do, 10, yeah. And then, okay, so this question, I need to get the squared by itself. So this is different than our previous ones because I don't just have an x squared, I have a parentheses squared. So I gotta get the parentheses squared by itself in order to square root both sides. So easy money, just subtract two. Now I gotta get rid of the squareds, so I square root both sides. I get 3 minus 3x equals the square root of 8, and 3 minus 3x equals the negative square root of 8. Now the really important piece here is that the square root of 8 is actually simplifiable. So we can split this up, prime factorize it, pull out a 2. So it means each of these root 8s is actually 2 root 2. So now that I've done this, I can replace it in these steps. Place the root 8 with 2 root 2. Uh, now I have to solve for x in each of these equations. Subtract 3. And divide by negative 3. And you get x equals 2 root 2 minus 3 over negative 3. Chillin'. One answer down. Next answer. Uh... Add 3x, to, or wait, whoa, no, subtract 3 from both sides. The, the steps are the same here. Uh, we get negative 3x equals negative 2 root 2 minus 3, and divide by negative 3, and the other answer is negative 2 root 2 minus 3 over negative 3. Cool. Okay, so those answers are pretty janky, and that was a lot of work. Um... In case those were too low on the page, I'm going to rewrite them up here, and then I'm going to kind of talk about some of the process. So, um, some of the process here that sends people for a loop is when I split this to two equations at this step, I actually have to make the right side positive or negative. If I make the left side positive or negative, I would have to multiply the entire left side by a negative sign. What most people want to do is for our negative equation, they want to do something like 3 plus 3x equals root 8. But that equation doesn't have a negative multiplied by the whole left side. You would actually have to do negative 3 plus 3x to actually multiply that side by a negative. This is way harder than just making the right side the number negative. That's why I always make this what switches between positive and negative, not anything on the left side. Notice how these left sides are exactly the same. After that, it's just solving with algebra, including some new stuff from this unit, which is why I spent extra time doing that. But this is the hardest type of question. Again, this is the first question on the homework, so uh, feel free to rewatch this if you want to uh, know how to do all the steps. Um, I want to do one more example with a slightly easier numbers just to clear this up before we bail. Let's say you have something like 2 plus x squared 
plus 3 equals 7. This is like the previous question, but has much nicer numbers for solving. So our first step would be to get rid of the 3. Our second step would be to square root both sides. But this time, what makes this nicer is the square root of 4 is just 2. So we get 2 plus x equals 2, and 2 plus x equals negative 2. Notice how I kept the left side um, as 2 plus x in both cases, and the right side's what I made 1 positive, 1 negative. Now I just solve each of these equations, and we get x equals 0, and x equals negative 4. So this had the same steps as the previous one, just much nicer numbers. So if you understand this process, you should be able to uh, see what happened in the previous one and make a little more sense of it. But yeah, this is it. Not a ton of new stuff added um, in this particular lesson. Um, where we're going next time, next lesson, is actually the quadratic formula. Maybe you've seen this dude in your uh, friend's work or something like that. There's a song that goes along with it. Uh, but this is a way to solve any quadratic equation for x as long as you get it equal to 0 ahead of time. So the thing about the method we learned today is we didn't need to get it equal to 0. We needed to get the x squared by itself. This is, like factoring, a method where we need it to be equal to 0 in order to solve it. And so this is going to be a really, really helpful tool. And if this looks scary, it's really not that bad. Because um, if you have any quadratic formula, like, yeah, notice how it equals 0? Wow. Uh, this number, this number, and this number. The number in front of x squared, if there's nothing, it's 1. The number in front of x, if there's nothing, it's 1. Uh, and c, the number at the end, uh, just get plugged into this equation and you get answers. So we're going to be messing with that next class. Lots of algebra, uh, but overall, not too hard. It's mostly just a plugging in thing. And I'll see you again next week with a video on this. Bye-bye.